Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And here we are, episode 98. 98. What's our topic? This is energy healing. Cool. Yes. I don't know really anything about it. Just started learning. But So much, yeah. so much to know. So much. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Well, before we uh, jump into that, how about anything from last week? Yeah, last week we did the Law of Vibration. And you know what? Sometimes we do these episodes and I learn so much myself Mm -hmm. and I feel like some of the things that I say or you say are definitely messages to us about how we're supposed to be doing things you know and so an episode like that really it kind of opened my eyes a little bit more to like you could get your vibrations higher you could keep yourself at a higher level you know Mm -hmm. and so something that I did this week to kind of help myself is I went to, and uh, we're going to talk about today, is that she's an energy reader. She reads off of your energy. Mm -hmm. Um, Her name is Amy. What's her last name? Amy? Jammer. Amy Jammer. Yeah. We both have had readings from her now. I had mine this week. Mm -hmm. Um, But she was just absolutely wonderful. And I love to share these kinds of experiences. Yeah. Because sometimes I think people think that's weird. What one psychic getting a reading from another. (laughs) Well, it's actually very, very helpful. Yeah. Because... I get messages for myself, but sometimes I think my message is, that's not right. That's that's not for me. What are you talking about? (laughs) Right. So it's nice for me to be able to have confirmation with with somebody else. But the way that she does it is she goes a lot off of your your energy centers, your chakras. And so it fits a lot with what we're going to talk about this week, Mm -hmm. the way that she did our reading. Because she went through each of my chakras and told me what was blocked there and why it might be blocked. And and it was really interesting. And then today I had a reading from a girl that just became a reader in my group. But she does this, she does the same kind of thing. She looks into all your chakras and she does the cord cutting. Um, cord cutting is really big with this kind of thing. We'll have to talk about that in an episode because yeah, I'm just learning about it. that too. Amy mentioned that too. <clears throat> yeah. But this is a whole different kind of like reading like psychic reading that Mm -hmm. i'm just learning about and and i love how it's coming about just as this episode is and the the way that these things all kind of flow together yeah it's neat how it works yeah uh she's incredible yeah she is i mean but it just gave me um it made me feel happy you know that there was somebody else out there because you're good yeah you know you're really good um (laughs) but it's different when you're close to home like this. Yeah. And, you know, and you're doing this all day with other people. It's like, I don't want to be hounding you like, hey, can you tell me this <laughs> or tell me that? Well, but are you going to believe it all the time coming from and, your own and, wife, too? And that's you know, true, too. It's weird. It's not like you don't tell me, but but there might be certain particulars yeah, that, that I was sure. curious about. But you do. So, yes, and you bring up a good point there because I kind of looked at it like, like a second opinion. Yeah. Like going to a doctor for a second opinion. I thought it was a great idea. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I and encourage that. Lo and behold, I mean, really, the truth is uh, Amy did something different with me, like with the energy and the chakra thing, which I hadn't had that uh, before. Yeah. But she did a general reading, <clears throat> like tarot reading, like yeah, you do. Yeah, she did for me, too. Um, which was the same as you've shared with me. Right. So I was like, okay, yeah. She's right. Samantha's right. I mean, they're yeah, both, they they're both saying up. the same mm-hmm. thing. So, um, <clears throat> and not just in general. There is detail. Oh, very know, detailed. Same yeah. things detailed. Yeah. Uh, so the energy part, which was cool, because she said, give me a picture of somebody you might want to do an energy reading on. She said, "I, you could be you or someone in your family, you know. So I just sent a picture of all three of us. Yeah. And she quickly did it. Um with all of us. Yeah. Uh, just kind of pointing out certain things myself. I, I started taking notes and it just got so fast. <laughs> yeah. I, it becomes I couldn't keep up anymore. A lot. Yeah. I need to know shorthand, but yeah. Anyways. So, but yeah, she talked about that and I was like, 
yeah. and, and specific timelines about where this began. Right. Like it, that's so interesting. The block or the unblockage or whatever yeah. it was we were discussing. Yeah. Um, about myself in particular, but she even brought up some timelines for Marina and about her. Um, both of us uh, had like heart chakra blocks. Yeah. Um, and she said like in particular for her, you know, uh, she had it. Yeah. And so I thought, well, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, and I, even for me, yeah. the, when she was telling me like about timeline, I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with it too. And it was all very accurate and it mm-hmm. makes you kind of, you know, for even for a, a psychic myself, I just sometimes need that to help me relax a little bit to mm. be like, okay, you know, she told me the messages that I'm getting are correct that I, you know, not to worry about that. And that is very helpful for me too, that, okay, I'm making the right decisions. I'm listening to what they're telling me to do. Yeah. So sometimes these kinds of readings, whatever type you want to do, they're really calming. People are afraid of them mm-hmm. and don't be afraid of them no. because they feels really, so good. Oh it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like going to, um, uh, how do I put it? Like a mental spa. Yeah. It's not about knowing the future because (laughs) we don't really know, you know, we know a timeline that we already knew she just kind of confirmed for us, you know? Exactly. So, but she wasn't telling us anything really super about the future, you know? It's just, you know, things to help you kind of see that you're on the right path. You're moving in the right direction. The same kind of of readings I do. She just does them in a different way. But then she also does tarot too. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Um, but anyways, you can find her on Facebook. Beloved One Tarot is the name of her page. So Beloved, the word, and then the number one yep. tarot. So that's Amy. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Thank you again, Amy. If you ever hear this, I might send it to her. Yeah, because she did 30 minutes, 45 minutes, hours. Yeah. And she did, you could do just tarot readings. You can do energy readings. Yeah. You can do a comp. For me, she's like, since you did. 45 minutes, we kind of have extra time. Yeah. Do you want to do this? And I was like, sure. That'd yeah. be great. I had a little bit of both. It was nice. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. And she made you feel really good. Oh, yeah. She really has a great energy about herself. So. Yes, absolutely. Probably one of the top ones that in the readings that I've ever had. And yeah. I've had a lot of readings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Cool. Yeah. Very right. good. Well, shall we hop in then? Let's do it. All right. Episode 98, Energy Healing. Energy Healing. So we just talked a little bit about it, mm-hmm. but what is energy healing? It's also known as energy medicine. Energy healing is a branch of alternative medicine based on the belief that healers can channel healing energy into a patient and obtain positive results. There are many, many types of energy healing. We're going to talk about some of the most popular ones today, but Mm -hmm. there are a lot of different types of energy healing. Uh, But first, let's talk about why we might need energy healing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So disease results from an imbalance in the, um, or a blockage in our body's vital energy. So if there's something going on in our body, it's not always what we may think. A lot of times it is a backup of energy, which is very interesting, but totally. it's very, very true. Um, so, of, of course, there's things, you know, like viruses and bacteria and all that. But those things, too, they can, if you like, if you think that you're going to get sick, you can talk yourself into getting sick. Like the mind is very, very, very powerful. So when your energy is all out of whack, you know, right? it, it does... <laughs> Yeah, crazy things. Um, We've talked like the last couple of weeks about energy and vibrations, and you can see how it's kind of built up to this point. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's see, what else can I tell you? So negative energy, we talked about that a lot last week. Negative energy can have an immediate impact on your health. So for example, you're talking to a friend about an illness or a hardship in their life. Mm -hmm. After you talk or interact with them, your energy is left feeling drained. And this is especially for empaths. This happens a lot for empaths. Yeah. How that conversation affected you, it will, you'll see it in yourself. Um, If you deal with this type of situation often enough, you don't, and you don't get rid of that energy, then it builds up. And this is when things can become a big problem. You might be unknowingly storing that, you know, if you're not getting rid of that negative energy and and not even realizing it. Potentially that negative energy can make you sick. Yep. So the energy itself 
can make you sick. So the energy itself, if if it can make you sick, it can take it away as right. well. Well, when you think about it, where does cancer come from? Right. Yeah. You know, when, when you think about it, it's like, it's not like a typical virus that's being spread, you know, through contact or air. Yeah. It just appears. Yeah. Right. We believe, like... There's a lot of things that can cause cancer, but well, we always I mean, besides chemicals and, right, and exactly. that kind of thing. I, I do. I get that. Sure. Right. But where where I'm going with this is that a lot of people believe that it's only those things. No, it's only, you know, no. cell phones or what you eat or that. No. It's also your thoughts mm-hmm. and you, the way that you act and the what you put out and you, and anger is definitely something a number that, one. Yep, um, we're going to talk about her later on. But Julia Cannon, she's the daughter of Dolores Cannon. She wrote a book that's all about this, and that's she good. talks. Yeah, she talks about how different things that have happened to you, where you're holding them, and mm-hmm. and you know why they're there, and. Yeah. Well, she went like literally through every organ of the body or yeah. like in discussing what potentially could be causing that. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. a lot of it made a lot of sense. It does. It all makes a lot of sense. I highly recommend her book. I, I'll let, see it later in, in the episode of my notes, but I think it's Soul Journey or something. No, maybe that's not it, but we'll get to it later in the episode. Um, so here are some symptoms that you might be holding this negative energy and it, maybe it's affecting your health negatively. Mm. And this is something that I'm starting to really realize with myself that I wish I would have learned years ago. <laughs> it would have saved me a lot of headache, literally, because yeah. um, the first one on the list is headaches. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that cause headaches, mm-hmm. a lot. But if you can sit there and go over, well, it's not... You know, not dehydrated. It's not something I ate. I, you know, go over a list of things and there's nothing else. Then it's probably because you have this residual energy that's stored that you need to get rid of. Yeah. Um, difficulty sleeping, restlessness. Well, of course, if you have all this energy, how sleeping is going to be difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, stomach aches and IBS. I have IBS and I have my whole life. But I, I've learned to control it. But when I was a teenager, even more so than the now, stress was the number one trigger for me of my IBS. Like, I dated this guy that our relationship got so bad that he would call me and I'd pick up the phone and hear his voice and I'd have to run to the bathroom. Whoa. That's no joke. No joke. It, it's when you are that sensitive it can trigger your ibs that fast and what is that what does that what's well, the energy mm-hmm. it's the energy that person's energy that you know mm-hmm. you're absorbing yeah. and if you have so much residual like you have to think of it this way if like if you get rid of the energy that negative energy all at once and it's gone and then you build it up again or whatever and you get rid of it but if you're not getting rid of it and you're just getting rid of little tiny bits at a time and you're filling more and more on top mm. of course of course it's going to it stores where's right. it going to go yeah like when you're all tense and like the knot yeah. you know knots and stuff it's um yeah, yeah, that's something else on the list. Yeah. Absolutely, is um, the tension. <clears throat> I get that, too, in, like, my shoulders and in my jaw. I hold a lot right. of that negative energy in there as well. Yeah. Like, we talk about that. You hold your tension in right. certain spots. Well, right. that's what it is. Yeah, what is stress? <laughs> stress is an, an, an energy that's going yeah. through you. Stress isn't, like, a thing that you actually put on. Yeah. It's it's a you're creating this right (laughs) right i think that's one of those epiphany moments for me is that like whoa i'm creating a lot of this myself with my own energy yeah yeah it's that's okay what else is on this list difficulty breathing so this was interesting that um our lungs hold that's where we hold our grief that's like the house housing for our grief so if you're suffering with grief and you're having problems breathing, you're having, you know, maybe even panic attacks that turn into those, <gasps> I can't breathe, then that this is why, because mm-hmm. that's where you're storing that grief in your mm-hmm. lungs. Anxiety and depression. I mean, come on. Um, yeah. More important is to treat the cause of the anxiety instead of treating the symptoms of it. Yeah. Because if you're treating the symptoms of it, you're never really going to get rid of it. So if you can treat the cause of the depression and the anxiety, make that situation or whatever that is better, yeah. that helps your energy in the long run. 
uh, chronic pain, tension, sleeplessness from chronic pain. I mean, come on. If you're always tense and you're, you know, storing all this energy in places, yeah. it's going to make you have pain. I've had that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, confusion. You may tend to overreact or get sad when dealing with certain people, and that might make you confused and exhausted. I can relate to that. Yeah. So those are all things that if you suffer those, you know, you might be storing some of that energy and it's getting clogged and maybe causing some of your, some of your health issues. Yeah. You know, uh, in order to restore our, our health, we have to remove the blockages and that's where the energy healing and the energy medicine comes in. Mm -hmm. So there's, like I said, there's many, many types of energy healing. So we'll just talk about some of the most popular ones. And one of the most popular is Reiki healing. Yep. And I, I have a, a, I have a Reiki master certification. I don't use it. I should. Uh, I forget. I have it. You've well, done it with me. I have. And I do it with it the works. dogs. Yeah. yeah. And I've done it like when I was doing pet sitting, I've done it with clients, dogs. And um, Re so Reiki, let me read to you what it is first, and then I'll explain some of my experiences with it. It's a Japanese technique for stress rejection. Um, it clears the energy centers. So your it clears your chakras. It's simple, it's natural, and it's safe. It's been shown to be effective in helping virtually every known illness and malady. I thought that that was pretty wild when I read that. Wow. Uh, Reiki can be done with hands on or hands off. So you can put your hands on the person or your hands hover above them. And it can also be sent over long distance because it is what is energy. You know, exactly. it's just, yeah. Uh, there's no religious association with this at all, no. at all. And it isn't, let's see, it isn't actually related to any belief. So this is something that I think is, you know, whatever you believe in is worth trying. Sure. For sure. Um, let's see. So let me tell you a little bit about like how I do Reiki. There's, there's very different tech. There's a lot of different techniques. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing this, you're kind of pulling the energy out of people. And so you like start by rubbing your hands together and you have the person laying um, on their stomach and you rub your hands together to get the energy going. And then you're going to be hovering over each of the chakras and going over and feeling what chakras are blocked. And this is very like there's a lot that goes into this. So I'm not going to get into all of that. Mm -hmm. But you can go through each individual chakra I go and I do a whole thing where I pretend that I'm opening the chakra like a, like a box uh -huh. and I'm looking inside to see what looks like inside. And we've talked about, uh, I think it was episode 44 where we talked about chakras and explained more about yeah. the balancing of the chakras. But I go through each one and see which one needs to be balanced. Um, that's, you know, a basic Reiki thing that you would do but you can also and my favorite way to use it is just when there's an ache when there's something going on and that's what i've done for you oh, um yeah. is with your lower back yep. and that's actually something you'll love this a study done in 2018 compared reiki to physiotherapy which is just physical therapy okay. uh, for relieving pain of people with herniated discs both treatments were found equally effective in relieving pain, but Reiki was found more cost effective and in some cases resulted in faster treatment. Girl, you got to help a brother out. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the wild thing about it, okay, is that you can't say that that there's not something here. If they're having physical therapy and Reiki having the same effects when somebody, mm -hmm. all they're doing technically is hovering their hands over you. Mm -hmm. Really, if, if, if it wasn't a real thing, that's all they're doing. So yeah. one or two things is happening here. This is very real, which is, you know, what I believe, or the person's making themselves believe that it's real, which is probably both. Okay, because they go hand in hand. Yes. But either way you look at it, it's energy. Yes. And it's being caused by energy. Yes. I, I'm not sure what uh, Julia's book, I think it was Soul Energy maybe or look, something, have... but it kind of goes back to what we're talking soul about. Soul Speak. Oh, Soul Speak. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, which was really cool because it goes back to this kind of idea about the mind over matter issue here yeah. of of what are we really capable of right yeah can we heal ourselves right exactly i think we can to yeah. a certain degree 
Yeah, to a certain degree. There's things that, yeah. You're we still just a can't. mortal being, yeah. you know, so certain things you're not going to be able to heal yourself of. Yeah. And, you know, m- maybe you might be successful at maybe <clears throat> tackling like a, something like cancer yeah. for a while, but yeah. maybe not win. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. I mean, there's stranger things have happened because yeah. really, you know, I just don't want to say to anybody, hey, this is what you should rely on if that's something that you're suffering from. But right. anything's possible. And if you believe it, yeah. it's absolutely possible. Well, doctors can't give you a guarantee. No, they can't. No. They What's the difference? Cannot. Yeah. Something that's cool about Reiki is that when it's being done on you, like, let's say that the person's hovering their hands, because usually that's what I do. The reason that I like to hover instead of putting my hands on the person is because I can feel the energy between us. And usually this the sitter can, too. Yes. And so it's really kind of cool to feel the energy coming out. If your hands are directly on top, it's good for me because my hands are always cold. Right. But it's not really good to feel that energy coming out. And one of the ways that I do this, that I do my energy healing is I actually imagine myself pulling that out, pulling that energy out. And so when I'm doing that, it has to go somewhere, right? Where's it going? Yeah. Into me. Yeah. So I have to get rid of it because it has to go somewhere. So how do you have to do like a meditation process yeah. then sort of to just relieve, exactly. release that? It's interesting because when you when you it's cool, and and it is beneficial because you've done it. And I remember when you first said you could do this. I'm like, you're explaining to me what it is. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And that okay. was before that you even found out that yeah, I was. Yeah, that was before I believe. Yeah. Um, but there was a significant difference in yeah. the way that my back felt after you did it, and the process was interesting because I could feel. It heat up. It wasn't because you went, you know, like this before. Right. No, because that you never just helps. touched me. Yeah. That that helps you. Mm. It's like a conductive exactly. sort of thing, you know. Mm. Um, but I don't feel that. But then yeah. eventually, as minutes go by, I feel that space right above, you know, where your hand between my back and your hand is mm. getting warm. Right. Yeah, you know, I feel this like heat. Right. It's yep. cool. Yeah, it is really cool. There's a lot of people that can do this. Um, long distance. The, the person doesn't even need to be in the room. I'm sure I could. I've never tried. Right. You know, it's just relieving. I would think the same thing. You're just picturing in your mind, pulling that energy out the same way that you would be if, you know, the person was in front of you. But yeah. I mean, I've had it done now and I know that it's very possible. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's pretty wild. It's, um, I highly recommend this to anybody for sure. If you know somebody that does Reiki, absolutely give it a shot. Now, the other that show that we watched on Netflix or something that was had all the different episodes of uh-huh. uh, yeah surviving death yes thank you forgot the title um, the one elderly lady that channels this um, previous life of a old man that was a doctor yes uh, and we discussed how credible this was because the man that she does this with she actually puts his ha- her hands on him yes but um, you could see how miserable he felt prior to oh yeah and then all of a sudden was like he didn't he didn't look really totally the same no he was looked like a totally different person inside you know yeah. that it came out he was glowing it was the color yeah you know it was it was interesting and it, all he did was just like release yeah and that's all that's all that he said to her right. him excuse me or she said to him was this, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I see this. I can feel it. There's, right. a, there's a block here. Yeah. And it was like as soon as she kind of just started putting her hand there. Yeah, and on those shoulders. Yeah, kind of like a shoulders to the upper chest area. Yeah. And he just like bawled. Started crying, yeah. And let it out. Yeah, he let that energy out. He needed to do that. Yeah. That's one of the good things about crying is it is another way to release that energy. It is. Yep. And so many people hate that, you know. I mean, yeah. I, I, and I get <laughs> it. I totally understand. Yeah. But um, it, it in itself yeah. has a lot to do with the release. Yes. And I've told you that I've noticed for myself that when sometimes I like my third eye, my sinus area, all of that feels really, really blocked and I can't get rid of I like I have a headache there and I can't get rid of it any other way. Right. Crying is the only thing that does it. 
Yeah. Um, I is it releasing a lot of whatever's built up in my sinuses? Sure, it is. Sure. But sometimes it's not that much, and the relief is even <clears throat> greater. And so I really think it's releasing that energy as well. Yeah. You know, you're that backed up energy in my third eye because if I'm taking on other people's energy. You know, what chakra am I taking it on to? Well, probably my third eye if I'm doing a reading for them, Yeah, I would think. So, of course, where are those headaches going to come from? Yeah. You know, so it is, it's a very good uh, stress reliever. I don't know, like, what kind of healing that I'm practicing to a certain degree, but I will also do things like, I don't know if you've noticed this, but our great Dane, sometimes he'll get hiccups or something and I'll go over and I will put my hand on his stomach and I will close my eyes and I will pull out whatever is going on in there. And have you noticed that it stops? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's sometimes it takes a little more. And I'm not saying that I could fix something huge. But right. when I see things like that with our animals, I will use my that type of healing before I try and go to something, you know, like medication. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. It's all about visualization and believing in that you can pull that energy out because you can. But mm-hmm. if you're sitting there going, well, maybe I can, it's not going to happen. It's no. all It all fits together. The belief is a big part of it. Yeah. So we talked about a uh, little bit about Julia Cannon. And Julia Cannon and her mother, Dolores, uh, they are known for something called quantum healing. Hold on. Let me find the exact... Okay, so Dolores Cannon developed a method called quantum healing hypnotic technique. Okay, and this is a form of quantum healing. And and quantum healing is very hard to explain because it's kind of a combination of using different things um, like quantum physics, Mm -hmm. for example, um, and meditation and Eastern Eastern medicine. So it's hard to like put a definition on what this is. But the way that Um, Dolores and her daughter Julia do this healing is through hypnosis and when they do the hypnosis I think they do this differently than other quantum healers that don't use hypnosis because they're going back to past lives and they're looking at what happened in your past life that made you makes you sick now yeah okay so it's not just things that we're holding in this life it can possibly be things that we're holding from our our previous life Mm -hmm. i've suffered from migraines since i was 17 years old Mm -hmm. and so i wonder if maybe that's something that happened in a past life and so maybe having this quantum healing could remove that is what they do they go in they find what the problem is and then whatever it is you work it out it's you know it could be anything it really could i mean because and it would make sense if your soul is carrying uh, the same energy like if there's something you're not learning in these lives you know that you've lived. Yeah. You're carrying that same energy through each life. Yeah. And there's something there that's to be learned. Yes. Absolutely. So, it, you know, it's, again, it's energy. It's not the flesh. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So that's one reason why if you're like going to a healer and, and it's not working, that could be one reason <clears throat> that you, it's because you haven't dealt with whatever it is in a past life. Now, the other reason could be that you are meant to deal with this in this life. Like people ask like, oh, if there's a God, then how come there's Down syndrome or how come there's, you know, cerebral palsy or or whatever horrible things there are that make people's lives not normal, you know? Well, maybe that's what you chose. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why you're here. Maybe that's what you're here to learn. Mm -hmm. So same thing with, I mean, it could be something like cancer. It could be my migraines too, could be related to, well, you have to learn some kind of lesson and, and that's just what you're here for. They talked about that. Um, in one of her books, I can't remember which one, honestly, but she talks about choosing that. Yeah. As you come into this life and that, um, I don't want to, say like you get extra brownie points per se that would be a silly way to put it but it seemed like yeah if you're willing to do that yeah for your a life then you'll kind of move up a little bit faster you're learning more lessons yes you know it's all about the lessons and so if you can pack a whole bunch of them into one life because you have to live this way and you're willing to do that then Mm. hey yeah so be it yeah but it's just getting you closer to 
the main source in the in the long run quicker. Right. Absolutely. Yep. So this is something that um, if you are into Dolores Cannon, she has a lot of books about the the quantum healing through hypnosis. And uh, Julia as well, like we had mentioned that one, um, Soul Speak. Uh, Julia Cannon, and so let's see, what did I write here for you? Julia Cannon's book, Soul Speak, talks about how every, sorry, oh, every ache, pain, and symptom we have is our body telling us something. Yeah. It really is. It's trying to tell you, you know, whatever your message is. But this is an example we've talked about in previous episodes. I don't really get into it, but I am um, a survivor of sexual abuse. And I have been told that I am going to have to have a hysterectomy because I'm going to have some kind of cancer. Mm. Okay. So today I related the two after reading this, I related to the two because what they said is here's an example. When cancer manifests in the body, it's indicative of what the anger is about where your anger is. And so because of what I went through, I hold that anger in my uterus and now it's going to be cancerous. And I was like, Whoa, brain explosion on that one. Right. But it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I can't go back and heal that now. I just can't. That's why it has to come out. Right. So I don't think that it's always healable, you know, or my my guides and my mom and whoever wouldn't be telling me that it needs to come out. Right. You know, but that's with everything. That's this book, The Soul Speak. If, if you, you know, read it, they have it on Audible. It, like you said, it goes through the whole list of yeah. what everything, every body part mm-hmm thyroid, liver, kidney, spleen, everything. Yep. And tells you if you have problems in these areas, where it might be coming from. Yep. Pretty wild. It's cool. Yeah. I was pretty blown away with that. Yeah, I was too. And it makes a lot of sense. Everything that like, uh, that I read in that book and correlated to my life, like the different things that I feel, you know, the, the problems I have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. So highly recommend that book. Um, and and quantum healing, if anybody has done this, because I know that this is um, harder to find than like Reiki and that kind of thing, yeah. I would love to hear about it. I get the newsletters about taking the course uh, to do this. Yeah. Oh, it's expensive and it's so much time to do it, to, to have this certification. Yeah. Um, but man, that would be cool to, to be able to do that. Doesn't. Didn't they start a foundation or a schooling? Did that ever yeah, happen? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Canon yeah. family? Yeah, they do okay. this this uh, quantum healing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it is. That's what it, But it, it is expensive. So. Oh, I thought you were talking about just a school in general. No, no, no. That's, that's theirs. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's see. What other kinds of healing? There's crystal healing. And I'm just getting into this. And I'm excited to be mm-hmm. getting into this so that we can have an episode soon about crystals. But crystal healing is the belief with crystals, uh, the belief that crystals act as a conduit for healing. Mm-hmm. They allow positive healing energy to flow into the body as they draw out disease causing energy. Each type of crystal is used for a different reason. So, Mm -hmm. for example, amethyst is believed to be beneficial for the intestines. So, during a crystal healing session, uh, that particular um, the the practice the practitioner may lay the amethyst on the energy center of the stomach, the solar plexus, um, to draw that out. So that's how crystal healing is kind of done. You can also wear the crystals if you're having the problem. When I talked with Amy, um, she told me that wearing, what is this, black tourmaline Mm -hmm. would help me because it repels negative energy. And so I bought myself a black tourmaline necklace and I feel it already. I do. But there's so many different things. No, you can carry them in your pocket. Yeah. So like if you put your hand in your pocket, you can just... You know, yeah. play around with it for a second, you know, but it's still on you and it's still getting the energy from it. I, you know what? I never, I didn't buy that crap back then. <laughs> I didn't either, you no. know. I mean, I just thought, oh, they're fancy rocks. Yeah. They look pretty. They're really pretty. That's where diamonds and things come from. And, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. all neat. Um, but I'll tell you what, when we finally went um, to this person's house and they were in this room and they had massive crystals. Oh yeah. I could feel the energy from these crystals. Yeah. Similar to like the energy coming off the trees, the Oak trees. When we go to Corrigan there's a sort of a, 
feels like a low bass frequency. Yeah. That you can't hear, but you can feel it. Absolutely. And this room was like a, I don't know, a 10 by 10 bedroom or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was killer. And you could feel it. Right. It was just amazing. Right. And at that moment, I realized, oh, yeah, these things have more to do with um, this world and what goes on than just geology. Oh, absolutely. Uh, And then reading into these Dolores Cannon books and start realizing that, oh, my, these are much more important than we could ever have imagined. Yeah. Um, And we don't even realize this yet. I don't think as as one society, we don't realize the importance of these. Not only are they energy healers, but they can create power. Right. Absolutely. And that I mean, like, by... You can fly vehicles oh, with yeah. crystals. They talk about it in Atlantis, Yeah, that there was flying vehicles back then that were powered by crystals. She talks about it in Jesus and the Essenes, yeah. that there was a mobile, a giant mobile they made of the universe, uh, not the universe, of our solar system and all the planets in it, and it moved, and it was powered by a crystal. Yeah. She also talks about all these other alien life forms that people have had in past lives. And she gets into describe to me what the inside of this craft looks like. Right. How is it powered? Right. Most nine times out of ten, they are powered by crystals. Yeah. Yeah. It, they're amazing <laughs> and for so many different things. Mm-hmm. When I was trying to find a crystal um, that's good for pain in your jaw because I'm still having dental pain even though I've had this dental surgery already and I found citrine okay Mm -hmm. and it said that what you can actually do is infuse your water with it so you put the citrine in the in your water and you let the water absorb it you know just like how you make moon water and then you drink that I'm like whoa I didn't even know but there's studies that have been done and there's actually experiments that show that putting a crystal in with with water in it it reacts differently than when the crystal isn't in there. Right. So it I absolutely believe that it's possible. Yeah. They make water bottles that have crystals inside of them already. Mm-hmm. But this you can do with whatever crystal, you know, you That's need. That's what they were kind of explaining that the technology within these other lives and other worlds are so advanced that that the technology isn't screws and metals and circuitry. It's reduced to crystals and bowls of water right. that have organisms in them that are the computer. Right. It's bizarre, but you have to be connected to that energy. Yeah. So this being gets in this craft, it connects its energy or its vibrations to the crystals and then it can control it. Yeah. And go wherever it wants. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's incredible. Yeah. I'm uh excited to learn more about crystals, getting into this yeah. more because, you know, we learned different things and I I knew that eventually we'd get to a point where crystals would just be put in front of me as something to learn and now they are. Mm-hmm. I've been really attracted to this tr- this crystal called moldavite for whatever reason. And I find out that it's like one of the most expensive crystals and it's in high demand and people make tons of it as fake and, you know, but of all course. of a sudden, yeah, but it's supposed to be like, you know, if you're on your soul journey, it kind of opens doors and stuff. So I would, you know, I'm ready for that. Um, but I'm curious to see exactly like what different crystals I can use for different things and, you know, see how they work. I, I've been collecting them, and I kind of my, myself forget. I was trying to get in the habit of every day and go and pick in one mm. and just kind of carry it around in my pocket, you know, and take it out every once in a while and roll it around in my hands, you yeah. know, if I'm just standing there talking or something. Yeah. Um, and I got out of habit, but I got a lot of them. I, I, yeah. I realized, well, I got a bunch. Yeah, I do too at this point. Definitely. But I want a case like that where we can have them out somewhere mm-hmm. where you can sort of get that energy, feel it from them, you know? Yep. It's important. And I see it now. It all kind of fits together. 
how we need to cleanse those crystals. Because, for example, Mm -hmm. like let's say that you are using it like this example and you're putting it on your solar plexus chakra Mm -hmm. and you're you're drawing out that energy that's making you sick. Well, now that energy, where is it? It's in the crystal. And so it has to go somewhere. It can't stay in the crystal or it's just housing that negative energy in your in your area there. So it has to be cleansed. And that one of the ways you can do that is the full moon. You put all your crystals outside when there's a full moon and it cleanses them for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. I'm sure you can do like sage and stuff, too. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. Sure. There's lots of ways. But I think it's more your intent. It's more your focus. So whatever your ritual, you know, is. To remove that, yes. it will be removed. Yes, you're but right. But you have to believe that what you're doing is removing it. Oh, yeah. I come up with my own little ritual, and the other night you caught me right in the middle of it, and you're like, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> where I light, I have two candles that I light, and I usually light an incense, and then I have a lavender mist spray that I spray around, and I open the window, and that's, oh, get the yeah. energy yeah. out the house. I have cleansed. <laughs> The demon. Yeah. So the other night I'm spraying and you're like, what are you doing? Like, I'm it, I'm making it go. The the negative energy is out. It's got to go. I have exercised <laughs> the demon. So this has become part of the ritual. And maybe that's not some a way that other people get rid of their negative energy, but you are you hit the nail right on the head. It doesn't matter. No. Because it's getting rid of it because I'm telling it. I'm, you're willing it. Yeah, to be. exactly. Yes. Yep. It's just about your belief. And I 100% believe it. I feel it. Just like when you're housing stress, you're willing that you're, yeah. you're taking that on. You're allowing, and I'm talking to myself too, because I'm oh, not yeah. <laughs> a total, I'm not a completely stress-free person. I'm a lot less stress-free than I used to be Me too. five, 10 years ago. Yeah. But you know, you're still by, by your own will, allowing yourself to hold that. Yeah. So mm. when you decide to let it go, which, yeah, maybe some tears might help. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yep. Or go punch a punching bag. Right. Yep. Whatever you need to do. Yeah. Uh, another form of energy healing is chakra healing. And we've talked about chakras a lot already in this episode. But like I said, we did episode 44 is all about chakras. Um, what is chakra healing? It, so you have seven energy centers starting at uh, your root, which is basically by your tailbone. Okay, so you have the root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown chakras all yep. going up your body. And each represent it's represented by a different color, and each one functions for different reasons. It has different things that it holds. So, like, obviously your third eye chakra, you know. My third eye has seen a lot of bullshit. So it stores it there and then it needs to be, it, I need to have that chakra aligned and cleansed. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. ain't that the truth? Yeah, it is. So I, I do this myself. You can get this done by a professional, but it is easy to do just by yourself. There's lots of chakra uh, meditations on YouTube that can help you heal and cleanse these chakras. But I'm telling you what, the, the more that I do this work, I, the more and more I realize this really is real. Mm-hmm. These chakras and these energy centers, you know, at first I was like, meh, I'll go with it. Sure, it's real. But now I'm like, no. I know it is because I've had two energy readings in the last week and they both told me the same thing. Yeah. So you know that it's, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And it it really can change a lot of, of things. Um, when you do the chakra, you wouldn't Mm. even think of like for, okay, I'm talking about, you know, my third eye. Okay. I may hold a lot of stuff in there. Um, but that might cause a headache for me. Mm-hmm. I have had times where I've had a headache and, and I've had to balance my chakras. And once I do, it goes away. Uh, so it's these are things that are definitely worth trying because they're they're safe. There's they're not going to hurt you. Right. So why not give it a try? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it does, you might just be mind blown and be like, whoa, I don't need to take Tylenol. All I need mm-hmm. to do is, you know, imagine. Yeah. Clean Use your chakra. imagination. Exactly. Exactly. There's, like I said, there's lots and lots and lots of other types of energy healing, but I'm just going to name a few more. Um, there's acupuncture. Uh, that's great. I've never had I've it had done, it. but I've, have you? Yeah. I've seen, yeah, that's right. You have. It was yeah. there. Um, yeah, it's absolutely <clears throat> it, it, same. It works differently, but it works with your energy. Yeah. 
Yoga is great energy healing. Uh, therapeutic touch is another form, which I think is uh, laying your hands on the person and kind of like Reiki, but you're, you're, you know, at the area that's the problem mm -hmm. at the source and, and kind of pulling that out. There's also different kinds of energy healing that are very like, like how we got into the quantum healing. Um, there's ones called healing touch and pranic healing that are all different kinds of, of energy healing, how they, how they specifically do it, what tools they use, but it all comes down to the same thing that they are, you know, cleansing your, your negative energy, pulling that out of your body to cleanse you from, you know, right. whatever is blocking you. That That's what they all do. There's, I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy. I can't remember what his real name is, but they call him the medical medium. And since hmm. he was little kid, I think he was like four years old, he could diagnose people's medical problems. That wow. was that. That's his, his superpower. So he's written books about this and like a lot of what he does from what I've seen is um, teaching you how to eat and how to cleanse your body through eating and stuff like that. But he's also, you know, very much uses his intuitive abilities. I would love to get a reading by him, but it didn't hmm. say anything on his website about, you know, that'd be cool. But yeah, I, I've never really, you know, read much of his stuff. I just remember that he's something I hear about all the time in the medical medium, you know, um, and, and he just, this is what he talks about, hmm. how you I'll can cleanse yourself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so, so let's see. Uh, what are some reasons to try energy healing? Well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? Well, you could feel physically better. Right. Mentally better. Yeah. Emotionally better. Mm -hmm. um, it's not to say you won't have good days and bad days, but this is your own. Like, let's face it. The human body is is just an absolute marvel of engineering. Oh, yeah, it okay? is. I mean, it, everything it, works together. The and way everything it's to. on this world is here for us to um, use right. to help us. Um, whether it is crystals or herbal supplements or, you know, yoga or whatever it is. Right. <clears throat> it is here for us. Everything we need is here. Yes, it is. But this body's totally self-containing. And if you do your best to really take care of it, which I haven't. So no, I'm, I haven't I'm not either. trying to make mm -mm. people, you know, I'm not trying to sound like I have because I, no, I haven't. Definitely not the two fittest people in but the world. That's for sure. If you do that, you can essentially take care of yourself. When we look back at you know, like biblical times, they talked about living hundreds of years. Right. Hundreds of years. Yeah. And then in Dolores' books, it talks about beings that can live until they're just ready to go. Until yeah. they're, they have feel like they've done everything that they wanted to do and then they go. Right. Yeah. So who's to say that we can't? Yeah, exactly. Yep. So... Uh, what else? What are some reasons to try energy healing? Well, it's natural. Like you said, it, yeah. it, you know, anything that you would do in that realm, it, it comes from the earth or it's just done natural. Uh, there's no side effects. I mean, you might feel a little bit tired or something after an, an, an energy cleansing of some kind, yeah. but there's really no, no side effects. Yeah. Uh, so that makes it safe and it's not invasive. You don't have to put no. unnatural things into your body. You don't have to, you know, do right. anything weird like that. It's just they're available to you with just the energy. Yeah, you don't have to go to doctors and put on those gowns where no. your tush hangs out the back, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but one thing that I keep hearing through this whole thing to remind people is not to let that energy build up because that is what causes illness. Yeah. If you don't get that negative energy out, then you get sick. Uh, this comes down to also mind over matter. And I truly believe that if you 100% believe you're not going to get sick, you will not get sick. <laughs> I did this once. Yeah, there was a cold going around the house and I was like, I'm not going to get it. I'm not, I'm just not going to get it. And then I got to the point that I was like, I, you know what I need, we were going somewhere on vacation. Oh, we were going to San Francisco. And I was like, I just need to get it because if I don't, then I might be sick while we're gone. If I, you know, get it then. And yeah. as soon as I let my guard down, I got sick. <laughs> I really, really, truly believe it's mind over matter, but yeah. it's one, 100%. You have to be like, I'm not going to get sick. Yeah. You know? 
I'd be smart. I mean, you can't. Well, yeah, you have to take silly you have chances. To be smart. But... There was okay. I'm sorry if this offends anybody, but there was one video that I saw around um, the election time, and it was these two women at a Trump rally, and they were not wearing masks. And this this interviewer guy came up to them and said, "Why aren't you wearing masks?" And they said, "Our vibrations are high enough that we're not going to get sick. We're just not okay." I, it's so great that they believe that yeah. I am so that's wonderful. Put a mask on though, yeah. you know, because you, again, you let your guard down for one second and you're, you're letting that happen. No, I don't think the know? universe is looking for idiots, you know, no. like, like let's be smart and still yeah. use our brain. Yeah. Cognitive power here, but exactly. I mean, I, yeah, it's like playing Russian roulette. Yeah. It's silly. It is. I'm not going to get, it's not, I'm not going to get the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> really okay yeah you realize that it's been one year this week that everything changed one year ago that the rona started everything changed wow yeah unbelievable huh it's been going on a long time yeah, yeah. it feels like it's been going on a long time yeah which probably doesn't help any of us with our our negative energy <laughs> yeah. um so how do you heal yourself okay if you can't go to a practitioner or whatever what are some ways that you can get rid of this negative energy that may be built up Meditation, of course. Yeah. I always go right to it. That's the number one way is the meditation. Grounding yourself into the earth. Um, we've talked about that too. You need to ground yourself. Uh, that will always is kind of like taking your vitamins, really, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, balance your chakras. Go on YouTube and find yourself a 10-minute chakra balancing. You know, it's, it's not hard. There are so many. Uh, learn about crystals. That's what I'm doing. See what I can you know, heal for myself with crystals. Yeah. Um, change the people around you and your environment. That's hard for many people, but if you can't change your environment or the people, you have to learn how to not let their negative energy affect you so much. Yeah. And you have to learn how to get rid of it. Don't yeah. let it build up. Um, and yeah, because you, you might not have a choice, you know? You might yeah. have to go to work every day with somebody that you, yeah. that you feel like brings your energy down or you suck, you know, they're you tend to suck theirs in or whatever it is, yeah. or maybe it's somebody else. It's a family member or, you know, whatever, even yeah. a friend, you know, a business colleague or a partner, and you got to deal with that. It's, yeah. You know, so you can't change the world, no. but you can start changing yourself and how you process these things. Yeah. So it doesn't affect you so much yeah. at, or if, at all, hopefully. And and remember, when you're done, like if you're in their company, then you just go and you get rid of that energy. You meditate, you yeah. you know, sage yourself or you light your candles or, or whatever. Right. Um, but the last thing on my list is you have to believe, you have to believe that you can heal yourself. If you don't believe, then it won't happen. Yep. Now, this is a very, very condensed version of energy healing. Like this is, this episode was like the basics of energy healing. Yeah. But this topic is huge oh, yeah. because you can heal yourself you and people like me that are healers that i'm learning how to do this mm -hmm. that can heal others there's so many out there in whatever form that they can heal you know yeah. um but it's a big topic so this really just scratched the surface of totally. it totally yeah but that's what i got for you it was cool nonetheless yeah. i mean if just based on the amount of different options you have to try shows that it's big yeah quantum physics and quantum healing is huge alone yeah and oh, then yeah. you start talking about crystals then you talk about meditation yep. and you know <clears throat> i still think we're much more intelligent and we've proven that we only use a very very small part of our brain yeah um so why Yep. Why do we have such a huge brain if we only use a small part of it? Yep, absolutely. Totally agree. And these steps are a way to unlock some of that, I think, for all of us. Yeah. You know? I think as as society progresses and technology changes, we're going to start to use this energy healing more and more. Yeah. And it's going to become pretty normalized, most likely. You know, we're talking yeah. far in the future, but... You know, we'll be long gone probably by the time it's really a big thing. Right. But I mean, maybe not. But I get to watch from there with yeah. no aches and pains. That's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For sure. So anyways. Cool. There you have it. Good job, babe. Yeah, thanks. 
Well, um, before we say goodbye to uh, our friends, friends, would you like to share your page? Yes. You can find anything that you'd like to know about me on my website, samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. If you'd like to reach us at the show, you can email us at spiritualjoneses at gmail.com. And good. you, good sir. Thank you. Uh, for my art, djonesartcollection.com for the web, at djonesartcollection for Instagram and Facebook. And for the music, gypsybrown.com for the web, at Gypsy Brown Music for Instagram, and at Gypsy Brown Band for Facebook. And, you know, Corona, that we just talked about that, so that's having an effect on everything. But yeah, we're still, everything. go to Facebook and we're Instagram, we're still posting our, our, our work. Progress we're, is being made. We, it is, and we're... We are so ready for this to be over so we can go out there and play. And, and um, But until then, we finish and we continue working on what we're doing. Yep, for so sure. So we have music that people can listen to when they don't see us live. Exactly. So that's all I got. Yeah, and I'd like to apologize once again for Zuma and his snoring because it's been going on the whole time. Yeah, he's he lays right behind me, so it's really we have to. Yeah, it's otherwise just the they'll bark and claw if we lock yeah. them out. So sorry if you hear it, but yeah. well, we can't be show. sorry for being animal lovers. No, They're he's a part babies. of the show. He likes yeah. it. <laughs> so, anyways, that's awesome. our show. Well, we hope everybody got something out of it. That I do. do. Yep. And everybody has a great week. And until next week. And love.